Well, here we are. I'm Lisa Fox, and welcome to Meet the Candidates on iHeartRadio. I'm here with Mike Garcia. Hi, Mike. Hey, Lisa. How you doing? I'm wonderful. Mike is uh, currently serving in the U.S. House and running for re-election in the 27th Congressional District in the upcoming election, which we know is right around the corner, November 5th, against uh, some other guy we'll mention. But welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so for having me. Nice to meet you. I know you're a local guy. I am. Yep. So um, the point of the show is really just to kind of go behind the scenes, really, and just get to know you a little bit as, as a person, okay. because politics can be a little, little overwhelming. Well, mean talking about all this the serious stuff and what's being done and what isn't being done. Yeah, that's right. But before all this, you're just a guy. You're a local man I'm with just a, a dream. Just a dude from Santa Clarita. Yeah, that's go. right. Yep. Yeah. So let's start off for people who don't know you. Okay. Let's talk about where you're from and yeah, your, your background and married guy, kids, all the good stuff. Yep. Uh, married with two boys, uh, uh, one 18 and one uh, eight years old now. And uh, hard to believe they're growing up so fast. But I was born in Granada Hills, so just a, a little bit away from uh, the studios here and uh, was uh, raised in the San Fernando Valley and then moved to the Santa Clarita Valley in 1983. Uh, and I was just a, uh, a kid who wanted to fly airplanes, you know, since a young age. And um, that's all I thought about was flying, flying jets and aviation and ultimately had the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to join the Navy, joined, uh, went to the Naval Academy and uh, was able to fly F-18s off of aircraft wow. carriers. Uh, Top for Gun stuff, so right? Literally, uh, yeah, literally uh, do, do what uh, you saw in the movies, Top Gun uh, 1 and 2. And the uh, dream come true, abs- absolutely the best job in the world. But uh, I've always had a, a desire to serve the country. I've always had a desire to do what's right for the country and provide security, you know, for the country. And that, that's been the great motivator for me all along. Uh, and now in this journey, representing, you know, three quarters of a million people at the federal level in the House of Representatives. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Um, but it's the same oath. It's the same uh, oath to the Constitution and to do what's right for the country and, and uh, not necessarily follow, you know, party allegiances, allegiances blindly and not just, you know, uh, uh, do what others want you to do, but do what's right and, and do what's uh, in accordance with the Constitution. I like that you said that because I do feel like people feel that they need to stay with one side. You know, there's the right, the left, and the middle. And sometimes people are just trying to, you know, it's tough. You, you want to pick your person, but uh, it's hard to get everything exactly aligned yeah. to your beliefs. Yeah. And, and honestly, there's no one person that's going to agree with everything that you yeah. stand for. And even every vote that I have taken. I have uh, upset the far right. I've upset the far left, right? Um, In my district, the the party that I'm a part of is only 29% uh, registration in in my district. So I'm I'm in the minority. So communication is the key. And I think uh, the difference in style that you see from most elected officials and myself is that uh, I'm I'm not a big party guy. I think both parties uh, are are kind of crappy right now, to be honest. Uh, They're both a little dysfunctional. Uh, we need weaker parties and we need stronger leaders right now. And I think um, the voters should be aligning to their own security interests when they vote. They should be looking at what the candidates stand for and what their own principles are uh, and voting in alignment with those and not just blindly voting for someone because they're a Republican or they're they're a Democrat. I think that's very dangerous when when we just uh, become lemmings and follow uh, sure. based on party allegiances. It's, sure. it's not what our founding fathers intended. I want to get into the issues that you are essentially, um, you know, fighting for, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But what, say exactly what your region is. Where exactly is it? Yeah, good question. So I represent North San Fernando Valley, Granada Hills, uh, Porter Ranch, uh, all of the Santa Clarita Valley, so up near Magic Mountain, uh, uh, and then Acton and all what will say along the 14, and then all of the Antelope Valley, uh, Palmdale, Lancaster, uh, close to uh, Edwards Air Force Base. So it's a big, geographically, sure. it's a big district, but from a political spectrum, it's also a very wide, diverse uh, uh, district as well. So you've been serving since 2020, so Correct. this is not your first rodeo. Nope. You know the area well, yep. growing up and part of it. Yep. And so what do you feel the needs of that community is? Like, What's your primary focus on accomplishing once you're reelected? Yeah, uh, these are these are uh, historically very safe neighborhoods, Santa Clarita, you know, Porter Ranch. Uh, and what we're seeing right now over the last, especially three and a half years, is a decline in uh, security. Um, and when I say security, I, I like using that word because it's a great unifying word. There's a lot of aspects of our life that are underpinned or, 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 or founded on security, whether it's economic security, the economy's uh, struggling right now uh, with inflation, with, uh, you know, basically the cost of living affordability challenges that we have, high taxes in California, that's an economic security. Neighborhood security where we're experiencing record high crime rates, record high homelessness rates, even in North LA County, which historically we didn't have. Uh, border security, which is a massive issue right now with 11 to 15 million people being here illegally. Uh, protecting Social Security, which is something that uh, anyone over the age of 30 is really caring about right now because we pay into that, right? We don't want the government taking that away, so we've got to make sure that we protect Social Security. 
um, and national security. We're, we're, we're experiencing right now probably one of the weakest moments in our nation's history relative to Russia, relative to China. Uh, the open borders aggravating that, and we're seeing, you know, uh, Israel now in, a, in the midst of a three-front war. So all of these things uh, that, that are normally segregated and used to divide people politically, and the Republican Party doesn't agree with the Democrat Party necessarily in every facet of them, but they all have the common denominator of security, and we all as Americans deserve security, and that's that's something that is the great unifier right now. So my district, when I talk to my voters, just want security. They want to be able to afford health care. They want to be able to afford their groceries, pay for the gas, have a job, not pay taxes, not uh, be held up, not have their car stolen, yeah. um, you know, and not have to leave California. And um, my, my, from day one, I've said my, my job is not to fix California. I love this state. I love the weather. I love the geography. I love the people. But the policies here are terrible. Um, and it's, it's tough to stay in California and survive in California. And my job is to prevent the country from turning into California. Um, and when and when the voters hear that, they they resonate with that because we we can't afford to have the entire country adopt the policies that Sacramento has put on us. Do how do you feel, uh, Mike? How do you feel? Like, what can you do differently than you've already been doing while you've been in office? You know, like how will this term be different? Yeah, uh, it, the, the the message is the same. It's a it's a loyalty to uh, to the Constitution, to capitalism, to competition, and investing in local charities. Uh, I'm, a b- I'm a big philanthropist. I believe in charity, uh, solving a lot of our problems. Um, um, uh, and then you know the same message about security. Um, in the end, the, the the number one priority in my office is constituent casework. We've we've uh, helped uh, close to six thousand of our constituents. You know, get their passports. Uh, you know, two days before their their honeymoon, they realize their passports expired, and they you know they call and say, "Hey, don't tell the wife, but uh, <laughs> I need a little help here, and we can we can get that done in a in a day or so." Um, people who are having issues with the VA, veterans who haven't gotten paid. Uh, we just got a veteran about one hundred fifty thousand dollars in back pay uh, wow. last week. Uh, the the government owed him for decades. Um, uh, issues with the IRS, et cetera, right? So any issues that folks have with the, with the federal government, this is what the priority is and has been and will continue to be, is just taking care of our constituents, regardless of political affiliation. Uh, and this is how you build support. In the end, people want someone who represents them uh, and works for them. And you'd be surprised how many congressional offices actually don't do any uh, constituent case work. It's actually sad, but uh, we, we have the hardest working office in the nation. How easy are you to get a hold of? I know you have uh, mentioned your website, but yep. right Instagram, are you on all the social yep. media platforms? Yep, we, uh, we're on all the social media uh, platforms. We've got our website. Uh, we've got, uh, yep, uh, at, uh, at, well, the, the campaign site is electmikegarcia.com. Uh, uh, we, and we do need support. We do need help on the campaign side. Um, uh, we need funding. We need volunteers. Uh, we need people to help uh, help us get out the vote. Uh, electmikegarcia.com. Uh, and then for, in terms of uh, from my official capacity, you know, I have town halls where, where they literally go four hours. And I tell people, we, I'm not leaving until we've answered everyone's question. And we'll have 500 people there. And at the end, we'll have 200. Oh, I love that. Uh, and we, we basically. That's important. That's important. Know? Yeah. yeah. We want to be heard and, and we've and, got questions. Yeah. And you don't always agree with the votes, right? So the, 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 there's no hard votes for me. Every time I vote, I have vote yes or no. Those are my only options. But the communication to the constituents on the backside is very important. So I want to make sure that we give them that time. And uh, we've had now the last two town halls go go four hours long. Uh, and that's that's how it should be. Um, so that's what we will. And are you feeling good about it at the end? You feel like, okay, we've had some resolve. We've, we've uh, done good you work see, here. You see light bulbs come on. You see people who, uh, you see temperatures come down, first of all. You know, my predecessors would have town halls and they, they, would, they were very raucous. And uh, a lot of uh, both sides of the aisle were just acting crazy and acting the fool with these things. And uh, but when you talk to people in a civil manner, when you give them the respect uh, and you understand where they're coming from, some people uh, have issues where they, they come from uh, a very cerebral place and some people come from a very emotional place. And you have to be able to have conversations with both types of people uh, and not judge them and, and try to understand their perspectives. And in the end, we may not agree, but they, they understand my rationale. The temperature comes down a little bit. There's no vitriol and hatred there anymore. And uh, and to be honest, yeah, at least a lot of them end up voting for me. Um, even though they don't agree on maybe 30% of the issues, they know that the other 70% um, are are in their interests and, and very important to the country right now. With the election just around the corner on November 5th, and you can, uh, I believe you can start voting already. You can yeah, do the early ballots voting. are in the mail. If uh, you haven't checked your mailbox in the last few days, they're there. Uh, otherwise, they're on your kitchen counter, and you can vote through the mail now. And if you're in Mike's district, uh, is it you just have one um, opponent? Yes. Uh, so in California, at the congressional race, you only end up with uh, two, two candidates. Uh, I'm the incumbent. I've uh, been there for five years, like you said, or close to it. Um, and uh, my opponent's a, a, a guy named Whitesides. Um, 
I would say the biggest difference between us, and, and this is something that is very important right now, um, is that I am pro law enforcement. Uh, I have supported Back to Blue. I think we need to defend our police and not defund our police. Uh, my opponent is one of these guys that he's actually funded uh, George Gascon. He's actually been campaigning with uh, George Gascon. And um, even most of the Democrats, even the elected officials uh, who are Democrats, have turned their back on Gascon at this point. And my opponent continues to support him and um, has, has, uh, has effectively bankrolled his campaign. So uh, that's, a, that's a huge red flag that I think, um, especially in a district like mine, where we've got the highest density of law enforcement, retired law enforcement um, um, they, they are struggling right now. Our cops, our sheriffs, and our LAPD uh, officers are, are really on their backs right now, just getting overworked and underfunded. So, um, you know, they appreciate uh, a representative who's not going to bend the knee to this defund the police movement and who's fighting back against Gascon. Even though I'm at the federal level, I'm, I'm fighting Gascon on a daily basis to make sure that uh, we're holding criminals accountable. All right, so you have all these goals you want to accomplish, and now now it's just a matter of just getting reelected. That's right. That's the, goal. the simple goal of getting reelected. Yeah. So, yes. uh, and these are tight races. This is one of the this you know unfortunately there's only about five races nationwide that are competitive. This is in the top two or three uh, most competitive races. Uh, we've had races where we've only won by 300 votes. Wow. Um, so your vote does matter. Those folks out there in California, especially who think their vote doesn't matter and it's it's all going to break one way regardless. That's not true. There, are, there are there are races that are very competitive in the country. There's not many. Uh, I think the country would be better off if every district was as competitive as mine. You get better candidates, better incumbents, more you know negotiation and compromise. Uh, but this is one of those districts. So we we desperately need people to get engaged and uh, and, and get out and vote. And, and I would recommend voting for me. And again, it, you have to live in the 27th con- congressional district to vote for Mike Garcia. And, yeah. and, and name the cities once again, your region. Yeah, so North San Fernando Valley, Granada Hills, Porter Ranch, uh, all of Santa Clarita, uh, all of the Antelope Valley, uh, Lancaster, Palmdale, Acta, and Agua Dulce, uh, and then all the way up to the Grapevine. So uh, as you go over the uh, five uh, up through Gorman, uh, we've, we've got that district all the way up there as well. If that's you, could Mike be your guy? Well, find I out. So. I mean, yep. hopefully this conversation helped. It and does. of course, you can find out again more on your website. Yep, uh, like Mike Garcia, and you can follow us on uh, social media as well. And uh, uh, we, we're talking about the issues daily. And uh, reach out as always if anyone has questions on, on policies, on issues. Uh, uh, we're happy to answer it. Wonderful. So nice to meet you. Good to meet you. And Lisa. a good luck Thank at the you. election. Thank you. Appreciate Mike, it. Mike Garcia. Good. Woo-hoo. Thank you. Appreciate it.